You're learning with 9 to 5 English. Business English for the workplace. Hi, Tim here with another 9 to 5 English lesson. Last time, we had a look at how to start a conversation. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to keep a conversation going. After all, there's no point in striking up a conversation with someone if you can't keep it going. But what does that involve? I mean, it's more than just asking and answering questions, right? So, what kinds of things can we say or do to make the conversation flow naturally? Well, one important way that we keep a conversation going is by showing interest in what someone says. If a person makes a comment about something, like the weather or work, you need to respond with interest. So what can we say to show we're interested? Well, there are a few ways we can do this. First, you can give an expression of interest, like, Really? Or, Is that right? Then, you can make a comment or question about it. You might also just pick out one idea that the person mentioned and make a little question about it. Let's practice some examples of showing interest in this way. Listen to each example, then repeat it yourself. Ready? Let's get started. Is that right? Wow, I hear it's beautiful this time of year. No kidding! That must be such an exciting job. Oh, really? That must have been amazing. Is that right? So then what did he say? Okay, so showing interest is important. But how does it sound in real life? Let's listen to a short dialogue between two travelers. They're talking about where they are headed or traveling to. And where are you headed? Home to Seoul, if we ever get out of here. South Korea, eh? Never been, but I've heard great things. You like it there? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's a big, crazy city with lots happening. Did you hear the expression of interest there? One person mentioned he is going to Seoul, and the other person invited more information about that topic. And you might notice that in a casual conversation like this, we don't talk for too long about one thing before giving the other person a chance to talk. And now's a good time to give you a chance to talk. So let's try a little practice. We'll repeat the dialogue, but this time we're going to beep out the response that shows interest. You will have to say that part. Remember that to show interest, we make a little comment and then ask a question. Here we go. And where are you headed? Home to Seoul, if we ever get out of here. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's a big, crazy city with lots happening. Nice work. Now, a conversation doesn't just continue on one topic forever, right? At some point, the speakers change the subject. But you can't just suddenly start talking about something different. That would be strange, because natural conversation flows. It doesn't jump around. So exactly how do we change the subject? Well, you need a little transition. Just a little word or expression that means, hey, 
Let's talk about something different now. That might be just a word like now, or it might be a phrase like by the way. Let's practice changing the subject with a few examples. Remember to repeat what you hear. Ready? Let's give it a try. Speaking of summer, how does our third quarter look? Oh, before I forget, are you going on the trip next month? By the way, did I tell you that we're headed to Hawaii at Christmas? And you? Has it been a good month? As you can see, you can change the subject to several different topics. You might want to move the conversation toward work, or to recent events, or to travel plans, or if you think you've talked a lot about yourself, you might want to change the topic to the other person. So, as we've seen, conversation flows from topic to topic and back and forth between people. But what about ending a conversation? What do you say when you want to draw it to a close? Well, all you need is some kind of excuse or reason for leaving. Maybe you need to use the restroom or make a phone call. And when you give your excuse, you can introduce it with something like, I should, or I need to. Let's practice some examples of ending a conversation. Once again, repeat the examples after you hear them. Ready? It's been nice chatting, but I suppose I should go find my seat. It's getting pretty late, and I should really be heading home. If you'll excuse me, I just need to make a quick call. Well, I shouldn't leave my husband sitting there alone for too long. Okay. Now how about listening to how ending a conversation works in real life? Let's listen to the end of a conversation between two people chatting at an office party. So, you live here in the city then? Yeah, in Delgado. Is that right? I've got a cousin in that area. Pretty nice. And convenient. Indeed. Lovely place. Well, Shelley, it's great to talk, but I've got to go and freshen up and find a table. Maybe run into you later. So, did you hear how that worked? Amber said she needed to freshen up, which is a nice way for a woman to say she needs to use the restroom. And she started by saying, it's great to talk, which we often use to indicate that the conversation is coming to an end before we give an excuse to leave. Now it's your turn to practice. We'll repeat the dialogue, but we'll beep out the end of the conversation. You can fill that in yourself by saying it was nice to talk and then giving an excuse to leave. Ready? Here we go. Is that right? I've got a cousin in that area. Pretty nice. And convenient. All right. Now that we've looked at how to end a conversation, it's time for us to end this lesson. Besides learning how to end a conversation, we've looked at some ways of keeping it going by showing interest or changing the subject. We'll be back soon with another 925 English lesson.
Until then, so long, and happy learning.